Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to RPT, season number nine, episode 114. It is Wednesday, 15 December, year of our Lord, 2021. <clears throat> Do I sound stuffy? You know, I mean... Do I? Yes. Because I, I, f- I can't really hear myself because... Um, Do you need me to crank up your cans? Just the... Yeah, sure. These punk-ass allergies. I am a... <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. One second. I am a weakling when it comes to <laughs> allergies. Uh, welcome to another, another warm... Humid, <laughs> warm, humid Christmas. I was jamming Christmas music all morning. Uh, I was jamming the music from y'all's uh, Sarah uh, service the other day from church. Did you, you heard it on link? YouTube? Yeah, she sent me the link to YouTube. Yeah, they were we, jamming. Yeah, bro, we saw it live. And they jam every Sunday, but um, when it's Christmas time, they really go in. Dude, that's so dope. I love hearing those kind of arrangements. It's my favorite time of the year. Uh, too bad I'm under the weather. I am on antibiotics and a steroid, not for muscles, but not inflammation. TRT? TRT? Not TRT? Yet? No, I wish, man. I wish. I told my wife, I was like, what's up with the TRT? She said, man, I heard that once you get on it, you, you got to stay on it because then your little nuts ain't going to know how to produce testosterone no more and your body going to stop making it on its own. And once you get on that Ferris wheel, it's going to be hard to get off. I said, woman, I am 42. I am in jujitsu. And I'm not having no more kids. <laughs> yeah, let me get my car. Go ahead. Go for it. Yeah, Chingo walks in here. and um, Wasn't I just sick like a couple weeks ago? Not too long ago. Luckily, you know, it's nothing ever too serious, but he walks in. Coffee in tow and a, and a handful of little goodies or whatever you're going to yeah. put up. Mm-hmm. Spills the coffee, <coughs> burns his hand, needs aloe vera. It's like, all right, we're not off to a good start already. Never fails. Never fails. So, last to cover today, uh, if you are not a premium member of the Patreon, if you're not a member of the TIA, the Tamal Intelligence Agency, the least you could do is go rate and review RPT right now as you listen. Just take a moment. It'll help us out. Uh, it'll help us get even more ranking. Speaking of ranking, we'll talk about the MMA this weekend on uh, Chingo Chats. Hell yeah. Can't wait. So on today's show, <clears throat> Oregon has lost its mind. Uh, CNN staffer arrested. <sighs> this boy. Well, wait till you hear this. Uh, Facebook fact check these nuts. <laughs> they, they said it was just opinion. And I really, this isn't, this is like a, if we have time, I really want to talk about um, Biden tells Jimmy Fallon it's Trump and QAnon's fault. He sucks. Did you see that? No. Okay, great. No, I really wanna, I really wanna get into that. And then Sarah Silverman got backlash over calling out Joy Reid. I didn't see that either. I guess I've been to, uh, to an MMA. Uh, There's just so much going on. There is a lot going on, and I actually, I can really appreciate. And I know we're gonna talk about it on Chingo Chat, but just for for the people that maybe are only listening to RPT because they love the political talk and they yes. miss some of the fun talk. Yes. What did you think of the fights? Oh, bro. Oh my God. I've watched. Pretty much each one of those fights, probably about three times, two and a half times, three times. Word? Yeah, I got my money's worth. All right. I went back on that ESPN app. I'm like, shit, yeah. <coughs> Chingo texted me. He's like, hey, is it working on your end? And <clears throat> you hadn't watched a pay-per-view in a long time, right? And I don't know if you had ESPN Plus, but it would fuck up. The first time you got it, it would always mm. like, you would get it, you would make the purchase, and then it wouldn't, it would be technical difficulties for like 30 minutes. But I guess it popped up pretty quick for you. Yeah. I, I had bought it one time when like McGregor had fought like a while back. That was right? one of the biggest times it had a fuck up, a hiccup. Yeah, it might have been a year or two ago. I can't remember. But um, but yeah, I got to, I got to catch Sugar Sean. So, oh, you did? Yeah, I was just waiting and the screen's like, I'm like, okay, it's. It's already time. So I text Rob, like, is it working on your end? He's like, yep. Nope. He sent me a picture of Sugar Sean beating somebody up. <laughs> but anyway, we'll talk about that on uh, Chingo Chats. Um, so Portland, Oregon. Okay, Oregon. What the hell's going on, man? The governor signed a bill suspending math and reading proficiency yeah. requirements for the high school graduates. So apparently this went under the radar <clears throat> back in like June or July, I believe. I think it was July it got passed, and it wasn't until August that people kind of started posting about it, and then I saw some posts yesterday, or over the weekend rather, that were talking about that again. And this is, the, this is from Fox. The remote's right there if you want to. You might need to turn it off and then back on so the, the cool really... Really? Yeah, I, I told you that. Sometimes just let the flap go up. And then once it like fully shuts off and you turn it back on, the, the AC really kicks in. That's the thing. Yeah. So the Oregon governor signs bill suspending math reading proficiency. So if you just read that headline, what, how would you make sense of that? Man, that's such a good question. <clears throat> if I was just a normie. Well, first of all, if I was just a normie, I probably wouldn't be on foxnews.com. Well, of course. Okay, so the governor signed a bill suspending the math and the reading proficiency requirement. I'd probably be like, huh, well, I wonder why. 
Why would they suspend that? Why would they get rid of those requirements? The only two things in the article, and I, I looked at all of them, went through CNN, Yahoo News, and just to try to get like a better answer, but they all cited the same thing, which was, one, it would help uh, students that are bad at test taking, one. Okay. And two, this is kind of the most uh, egregious one. He also said that the new standards for graduation will help benefit the state's black, Latino, Latinx, indigenous, Asian, Pacific Islander, tribal, and students of color. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, well, how would it help Asians? How would it help anybody, honestly? <clears throat> like, this isn't, it, it's weird because the, the only thing they really cited was that during the distance learning, you know, it was difficult for kids to, you know, pay attention or whatever. So, it's like, okay, now that they're back in school, you think the solution is to get rid of those kind of uh, requirements? I mean, as a country, bro, like, if we want to compete against the rest of the world, <clears throat> like, this is the future, man. These, these are the future students. And I guess we'll find out eventually, like, if this if this does go through and things don't get kind of fixed, mm -hmm. it'll be like 10, 20 years from now. You'll meet somebody like, wow, you're really fucking dumb. Where are you from, Oregon? <laughs> oh, got it. Well, now that this is in place, this isn't in place. For, it's in place for a minimum of three years and could effectively go on for five years until new requirements are put into place. It, OK, so uh, pay, uh, it could stay in effect for five years. Yeah, maximum. But for minimum, it's in effect for three years. So this is just like everything woke turns to shit. Basically, and it just doesn't make any sense, you know? Like, is, that, is it all based on, like, some critical theory, like, math is racist type of thing? We'd have to read, you know, we're kind of mind reading on that sense, but she's literally not wanted to answer questions about it. So Governor <laughs> Kate Brown is who passed the, the bill. She's the Democratic uh, governor of uh, Oregon. And, uh, yeah, it's very, very vague and doesn't really give you many answers other than those two things. It helps students who can't take tests, and it helps all these people of color. So basically, they're just going to like pass along like it's cool. You don't have to know how to read basically. or add. Yeah. And and then just kind of good luck. Good luck out there. Good yeah. luck with your life and um, contributing to you society. Know, hopefully you have a good strategy for life. Hopefully you have a good system in place. Nah. And um, but chances are not only are they taking away requirements, but chances are they're feeding them a lot of woke ideology. So these people are going to navigate the world with this different filter. Of like, you know, eh, you don't really know how to, you don't have to know how to read to get by. Right. And they're going to look at the world through the lens of like white supremacy, systemic oppression, racism, race, race, race. And even though this was on Fox, um, it's it cited in there that the legislator had bipartisan support. So those people on both sides of the aisle that went ahead and said, yeah, go ahead and do this. Right. So if you just read the headline and you posted it on your Twitter People would be like, oh, my God, can you believe this? But also you had some Republicans in there that were like, yeah, this sounds like a good idea. Why? I don't know. It just kind of goes with, in my head. I'm just saying, no, oh, it just kind of goes with the narrative. Like, fuck it. Let's just let's try it. They must be rhinos. Yeah. That's got to be a rhino thing. Like, what Republican would, would like, side with that? Uh, one that's just kind of trying to do it for the vote, right? <clears throat> kind of just trying to do it to stay in power and not kind of ruffle too many feathers. There's a lot of people that don't want to pick sides with a lot of this stuff. They just want to go with the go with the flow, right? Go with the motion. Like, where's I, the the wind blowing? I wonder if they're also like um, anti-Trump as well. Like that was an insurrection, and math is racist. You know, this is uh, before we get to the next one. Off subject, on subject. Who was the guy that had that farewell sign off the other day? Was it Brian Williams? Yeah, right from MSNBC. Yeah. Did you listen to it? it yeah, I did. It was very like. I think people tried to read into it more mm -hmm. because he, he left it a little vague. It was, let me just paraphrase and then you give me your two cents. But uh, it was something to the effect of like, where are we headed? Yeah. You know, where's everything going? And that was it. He didn't really say like critical theory. No, you know? he was also, he, he was like, I'm not a liberal or a conservative. I'm a uh, institutionalist, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe yeah. in this place, which I, I totally got behind that. And as I kept listening to it, I was like, okay, this is, this is too on the nose. For somebody who's, tr who's about to leave MSNBC, you know, he's not like he's a real, people might not like this, he's not a real journalist. A lot of these people on these TV shows aren't real journalists. They're just talking heads that read a teleprompter, right? They, put, they read other fucks, they're Ron Burgundy, basically. Yeah, they're, they're not Glenn Greenwald or mm -hmm. Matt Taibbi. Exactly. So, um, you know, people had sent it in the Discord, a lot of listeners, and I got a bunch of it, uh, that same clip in my DMs and stuff on Instagram. But if you read the article that was posted by, like, uh, Newsweek or uh, CNN even, it was all, it was all kind of wrapped around the we're coming on the January 6th anniversary. It was all about that. That's what that whole article, everyone, every major publication that cited Brian Williams' farewell speech or whatever was like, as we come upon the January 6th, you know, anniversary of one of the most darkest days. And then his videos in the middle of like, 
I don't know. I, I didn't really find the correlation there. Like they were trying to be like they were trying to frame it. Yeah, he's pro-America <clears throat> and he's saying how like we're coming on the darkest anniversary of American history, kind of. thing. It was a psyop. You motherfuckers don't let that shit go. It was a psyop. It was a psyop. Like these people won't answer the questions of like, okay, what happened to the pipe bomber? Okay, what happened to the Ray Epps, the leader of the uh, Oath Keepers? You know what I'm saying? Like, what did y'all know? What did the feds know? How many fed? How many feds were were in the mix? Right, because that's y'all's job. Y'all's job as intelligence people is to penetrate these uh, militias and, and yeah. get intel. Yo, I don't know if it's uh, it was a Matt Taibbi one, which actually we I was referencing something. Oh, he was talking about the the guys with the fucking Star Wars suits. The, yeah, 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 yeah. The, it, uh, Patriot front. Yeah, you were right. It, what, I hadn't finished. I guess you were ahead of me on that episode. He was talking about how they were in, too in shape to be like QAnon or mega supporters or whatever. But later on in that episode, and in another previous one, maybe the one with Jocko, he was referencing things like Peter Daszak and Revolver News and shit. I'm like, holy shit, he's talking about all the shit that we've been talking about on the show for a long time now. Yeah, catch up, man. Tell you. No, catch up Rogan, too. Yeah, catch up Rogan. Um, <laughs> speaking of Patriot Front, the dudes with the Stormtrooper knee pads and their faces covered, and they were all like, you know, what, 10% body Triathletes. fat? Triathletes. Yeah, 10% body fat or some shit. Um, whatever happened <clears throat> to the folks that were out there in Charlottesville with the tiki torches. They didn't have their faces covered. Why haven't all those people been exposed as like, hey, that guy, I went to middle school with that guy. Or like, hey, that dude works at the office depot by my house. Or like, um, hey, that, that dude's a fed. Or like, whatever happened to that? Like, uh, yeah, nobody dug into that? No. Uh, before we move on, we have three weeks. Is it still? Is yeah. it three? Oh, my God. We have three weeks left before New Year's Eve. We need a big rally of listeners to show their support and join the TIA, the Tamal Intelligence Agency. The most dangerous, provocative <laughs> podcast <laughs> in America I'm because like, we talk about real shit. I'm like, he's um, going to ad lib this. Where's he going with it? Yeah, no. Why is he saying dangerous? Um, yeah, they already <laughs> think we are, right? Latinos, we were talking about this kind of stuff. We are dangerous, if you think about it. I mean, bro, I, I get so much pushback because, you know, I was Mr. They Can't Deport Us All and things like that. But, dude, follow me on Twitter because it's spicy. I come in real spicy on there. Um, there was a story. Okay, Cap G posted a story of like how in Georgia they found there was like real deal slavery going on. Did you see that? I did. They were holding I've, people gunpoint. They had them like picking stuff for free, they, or like two cents a day or something like that, right? Or was yeah, it free? I don't know. I don't know what. It, but it was some type of slavery, right? Mm -hmm. And my take on it, of course, right? Because you know now I'm conservative bling. I was like, hey, when you have a wide open border, it's only going to be more of this because. You have too much movement in the shadows. You, you just got like an onslaught. You, you empowering the cartels. You're empowering the, uh, the traffickers. The um, shit, La Jolla PD is taking donations. You know what I mean? You got all, they just killed a mom and her kid uh, on some high-speed chase stuff. It's like the wild, wild west. Yuma, Arizona has had like a 2,300% increase, like the amount of folks from all over the world. People want to think like, oh, man, Chingo, he, he ain't proud of being Mexican no more. What happened to your Mexican roots? And... Turn your back on la raza, way. What's happening, fool? It's like, bro, it's not just Mexicans crossing. You know what I mean? Like, how many Albanians and whoever else are you finna have in your neighborhood? But um, we have some, uh, we have some friends, some acquaintances that are, uh, you know, that are that are black and white, <coughs> that are patrolling in the black and white units that are going down there regularly. Highway patrol. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, state troopers that are going down there to, uh, you know, reinforcements, backup kind of thing, and and adding to the to the help that they need down there. And I was like, how long do you think you're going to have to do that? He's like, uh, one, two, three years until Biden's out of office. <laughs> He's like, yeah, straight up. Like, that's probably not going to stop anytime soon. I mean, dude, I wish people would just like. And what kind of pushback do you see from when you post something like that? Oh, all the time. Ready? Here's what one person told me when I when I posted on Twitter uh, that story. Here, let me just try to scroll down because I tweet a lot. I be retweeting and shit. Um, I'm so glad he didn't just let that go when it got hacked. Yeah, I forget how I got it. But how did we get it back? We actually ap appealed. Okay, whatever. we had to do an appeal. Yeah. <clears throat> let, let me just. Sorry, y'all. I have so many tweets. Um, so many replies. It's talk radio. This is part of the show. Yes. So um, I posted the story about the 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 slavery in um in Georgia. Like slavery ain't dead. Here it is. A two hundred million dollar two year modern-day slave trade was uncovered in Georgia. Migrants from Mexico and Central America were forced at gunpoint to pick onions for 20 cents a bucket. 
Their passports and documents were stolen from them, so they couldn't escape. No one is talking about this. Okay, I, I retweeted and I added, wide open border sounds nice to some people, but it leads to more of this. And then, of course, somebody was like, these people were on work visas. They didn't come illegally. Read the article. You know, man, I love your work and I get your point of view, but it's a little misleading to mention open. I guess I'm in the group that doesn't agree with open borders, but I find it misleading. I said, maybe not this case, but cartels are growing weed in California. They use people that they just cross, crossed and forced them into slave labor, living in squalor and bad conditions. You know what I'm saying? Somebody said, talk that shit, chingo. <laughs> I see a lot more of that than the, uh, the people arguing with you these days, though. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I retweeted uh, Dr. Peter McCullough on Rogan. Oh, that was a good one. Did you hear that one? Not yet. <sighs> yeah, it's brand new. Brand new. And then I retweeted this. I said, pray for the RGV. Illegal aliens in Mission, Texas just killed a mother and daughter after invading our country and running from the police. I'm retweeting uh, Ben Burkwam, Real America. As they were running from the police, right? And some point, at some point, armed citizens are going to take this invasion into their own hands and they will be justified. Biden has abandoned America. How much more? And then there's the photo of the wreck. Yeah, dude, they killed a, uh, a mother and a daughter. Crazy, bro. Damn. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yep, CNN staffers. Here we go. Let's, let's transition to that. CNN staffers are getting arrested for child trafficking, and Pelosi wants us to look at text messages. Womp, womp. Bro, I heard that dude had a... Uh, he was Cuomo's homeboy, right? Mm -hmm. He had a snow cabin in Vermont specifically to try to, uh, what's the word they use? Groom? Train? Uh, he was, yeah, it was, uh, <clears throat> what was it called? Sexual submersive training. Yes, yeah, sexual subser subser sub subservience. 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 Yes. La madre. Subser ¿Sabes qué, wait? Math is racist, fool. <laughs> so is reading. Former Quiz Cuomo. Quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this is allergies, bro. Shit. El bebe bling. Former Chris Cuomo. <laughs> Freedom. Former Chris. That's a problem. That's, that's a, that tongue twist is a problem. Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo. Producer. Twain girls. As Fue young, Fuedo. Yo, as young as seven? Bro. I'm telling guys, if you want to read it, I don't know that we're going to read the full thing on the podcast because it's. <sighs> I don't want to read it a second time around because I've read it already before. The New York Post... But they wrote the best one that I found. Um, the article is titled, Former Chris Cuomo Producer Trained Girls as Young as Seven in Sexual Subservience Court Docs. It is dark. So the mom was like, she went and told the police or what happened? Dude, I, I, I read it and it didn't even tell me how, though. That was the one thing I couldn't find. All I know is that he was arrested by the FBI on Friday. So how the FBI, I don't know if the FBI, you know, obviously <clears throat> somebody may have said something and they were, they were tracking this guy or whatever. Which again, we can get to the FBI's uh, ability to actually catch these people on, a, you know, on another episode. And the timing is interesting with like Cuomo getting fired, mm -hmm. and then we see this. So going back to the Brian Williams thing, you know, uh, what's her name? Rachel Maddow says she want to take time off and spend more time with her family. Uh, and I know th the stuff I'm about to list. It, it doesn't have to do with um, what is this? Sexual stuff with kids, nothing like that. But it has to do with the fact that midterms are coming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff getting unearthed. You got like the red tsunami and people who helped all these hoaxes and helped Biden get elected. Yeah. Are all of a sudden, like, you know what? I want it like, for example, uh, George Clooney. George Clooney kept teasing that he wanted to run for office as a Democrat, yada, yada, yada. All of a sudden. Yeah, I think I want to just enjoy my life like. From Rachel Maddow, Brian Williams, George Clooney, so many people were just like, doop, doop, doop. I'm going to just chill. Yeah, the people that were painting the narratives, right? The people that were, that were kind of leading or at the helm of these ships of all the hoaxes and all of the bad narratives and all the lies. Some of them are just flat out lies. Like, and, yeah, now Trump ain't in office, so they ratings suck. Right, and we'll get into some of that on the next subject. But here, let me just, uh, let me find a paragraph here to read. Uh, well, no, nah, I'm not even going to read it. I'll just give you the gist of it. So he was on like a fetish website, right? He was on these fetish websites where he would try to find parents mothers who had kids and would try to convince the moms to come to his cabin along with the kids right so he did i think the the, the last one i read in the article was he got somebody who had a, i think it was a 13 year old to go to his cabin in vermont or wherever it was with her so he went to the airport and they even say in his red tesla x or whatever or model y picks up the mom and the daughter and the, i mean they're just willingly apart pa paid her thirty three hundred dollars i think for expenses 
Yeah. Okay, bro. All right. So the mother of the kid mm-hmm. was on the fetish website. Yeah. I wonder what kind of, like, what business did the mom, what kind of fetish? And then for him to be like, hey, um, you ever go snowboarding? Oh, uh, I'd love to. Why? Hey, man, bring your kid. What the fuck? Yeah, dude. Um, and she, what if she was like, okay, are you going to bring your kids? He then allegedly proposed a little mother-daughter trip to his uh, Ludlow, Vermont ski house for the sexual training and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the indictment says. Another time around, all right, so around the same time, uh, Griffin spoke to another person who claimed to be the mother of a 13-year-old and 9-year-old girl saying, it's your job in, con- in concert with me to see the 13-year-old daughter trained properly according to the document. Dude, the whole article is, is basically him saying that, um, you know, th- this is women's roles, d- d- you know, regardless of what people think, you know, women are the, the p- I'm sorry, let me quote it exactly if I can find it. Um, so he's trying to justify and rationalize this whole thing. I guess. He has, I don't know that he's, that he's made a statement about it. And CNN's, they, the only thing they published was that uh, the things that we found are deeply disturbing or that we've heard. Um, Man. Yeah, it's pretty dark. They need to put him up under the jail. Uh, Griffin said. How much in, time they gonna give him? Griffin said he'd instruct the teen and her mother to remove their clothing and touch each other. The indictment says. Touch the mama, dude. In an earlier instance in April. Oh, CNN. Griffin chatted with a purported father of fourteen-year-old girl and told him he'd sexually trained a seven-year-old and said his and said the dad. The dad's teen would be a good candidate for his school alongside his mother, the documents claim. The dad went along with it? For how much? $3,300? That was another account. That was a different different person. <sighs> Boy. It is dark. Yo. I mean, this is the type of shit that need to get, be getting more attention. And um, I feel like the normies, man, they too busy worried about, you know, like, I don't know, their neighbor wearing their mask or something. Like, I bet the average CNN viewer has no fucking clue. No, no, of course not. They have no, 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 no. no fucking clue. They're just like, oh, this is the news. Throughout 2020, Griffin had a number of conversations with the purported parents of young girls in which he espoused a way of life, quote, in which women are sexually subservient and inferior to men, prosecutors wrote. He sounded like Epstein. Straight up. I wonder how many people he did this, did this to. Oh, uh, I mean, at least in this article alone, there's one, two, three, four, five, I think six. Bro, this trial need to be like public. <laughs> and he's only been sus- to the, to, to, to date, he's only been suspended from the network pending the investigation into the allegations of attempting to lure at least four girls ages 16, 14, 13, and nine to his Vermont house for deviant training ses- uh, lessons uh, on such things as spanking and C K worship. C dash probably cock, probably cock worship. Nah, bro, come on, they wouldn't say. I don't know, bro. Uh, okay, so yeah, Chris Cuomo, his producer. And then it says... That's a problem. Yeah, that's a big problem. Trained girls as young as sex. And then he tried to give it a cool name. Like, oh, it's, you know, it's a schooling of sexual subservience. Yeah. To make it sound like legit. Sure. What kind of fucking parents go along with this shit? Psychos that shouldn't have kids. Gente estupida. Pinche gente pendeja. All right, so Facebook, they admitted that uh, their fact checkers are just an opinion. Did you, did you read anything on that? I didn't do a deep dive, but I sure as hell put it on my story. <laughs> on the IG, I saw what I needed to see, and it fit my narrative. There you go. Yeah, so Facebook admits <clears throat> in court that fact checks are just opinions. So there's a lot of quotes from, from this, right, from this uh, whatever happened in court. And the best part I can read to you guys is from another. So this is all around uh, John Stossel suing Facebook. John Stossel, was that? the anchor that used to be on ABC and Fox. Mm. I'm going to play a video, actually, from him, because he wrote a piece for the New York Post about it, too. But whoever, you know, Facebook slash Meta, whoever their re- representative is talking about this, uh, wrote, let me see. Uh, for another, Stossel's claims focus on fact check articles written by, because cli- it's all about climate, about climate feedback, not the labels affixed through the Facebook platform. The labels themselves, meaning the fact check labels, are neither fake nor defamatory. To the, con- to the contrary, they constitute protected opinion, was Facebook's words. Read that one more time. For another, Stossel's claims, because this is all about defamation, right? Mm-hmm. And about the content he's been posting on Facebook regarding climate. So Stossel claims 
his claims focus on fact check articles written by Climate Feedback, not the platform. The labels themselves are neither false nor defamatory. To the contrary, they constitute protected opinion mm. under Section 230. There it is. Section 230. I think that's like, I mean, for one, um, you know, Facebook and social media and a lot of these types of entities, <clears throat> they try to play like Ministry of Truth, mm. right? Which is, which is like um, some 1984 type shit where they do what, like the thought police. Right. Right. Like, oh, that's dangerous speech. And we're living in this uh, precarious times where, you know, you have very important decisions to make when it comes to like, hey, wait a minute. Why are they why are they forcing us all to go electric? Or like, what is this Green New Deal build back bankrupt bullshit? You know, like, why are we going to give all these jobs to China to make our batteries? You know, why is our you know, like all these decisions that have to do with the pandemic and, and, and so on and so forth. Or if people have. Like, hey, look at how many people were, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Had a bad reaction from the, the poke or whatever. And then now here comes big tech coming in to monitor. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. censor, suppress, label your stuff. And it's like, hold on, thought police. Hold on, Ministry of Truth, 1984. And then they, and then they wiggle around it like, Okay, well, when it comes to Section 230, this is just opinion. Therefore, some of this stuff don't apply. And it's like, well, you're still putting labels on everything. You're still suppressing and shadow banning and deplatforming people. Uh, let me see. There was a video. I mean, there was Kamala and a couple other people that were going around, and they were, they were talking up these new electric vehicles, right? There was one at, I don't know if it was at Chevy or what, but it was like the Volt, like, you know, releasing the new Volt. Because they're trying to that. give, they're trying to give like a like tax 1200 or $12,000 yeah. or whatever it is. But there was a video, damn, I can find the one of Kamala, but there was another one where a representative was asking, or like a journalist was like, they, they plug it in, not Kamala, this is another person, plugs it in and like, they're like, oh, where's the battery? Like, it's under the car, you know, this is like a new technology, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, where's the, where's the real power? And she was like, what's, well, it's, it covers, it. he's like, no, like, what's powering this car? He's like, oh, the so-and-so plant, you know, just down the street actually powers this facility. He's like, oh, and what do they run on? She's like, coal. <laughs> She kind of just tries to like move it. I think they have some nuclear and then that's it, right? But yeah, like these cars don't run off of fucking solar and wind and wind. They don't run off that stuff. It runs off coal. It runs off shit that we're trying to uh, produce more of, but aren't being allowed to produce more of. We produced so much at one point with Trump, when Trump was at the helm, to where we, were, we weren't only energy independent. We were actually exporting full spectrum energy. And, you know, I was listening to... Um, a lady who's going to run in Alaska. And she was just saying like, bro, the Alaskans, like they're tired of all these woke Democrats, like trying to, you know, pick the birds and stuff over the people. Like, in no, they words, were pretty hit. They were hit pretty hard. Right. By some of the things that had to put a pause on. It was a lot of it was in Alaska. Yeah. Cause a lot of their jobs and just, you know, like when it comes to federal, how much land they control and own and this, and you know, a lot of these politicians, like, Making people lose work, lose jobs over like, well, these birds. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Crowder was like, if the entire shore everywhere around the country is filled with birds filled with oil, I don't give a fuck. We need cheap oil that can run our economy, that can run the country. Which to a degree, I totally agree with him. You know, um, call me a bad person. If you I mean, like. I, I mean, I think he was being hyperbolic. Of course yeah. he was. Of course he was. But the uh, same idea is like you're paying too much attention to a couple of seagulls. That might, you know, fall into some oil on the shores. Meanwhile, these other countries that pump oil in the seas, there's more spillages out there in the oceans that you never hear about because they're way the fuck out there. No one's covering them. But when something happens here in the Gulf or happens somewhere, you know, close to land, it's it's news of the year. Yeah. I mean, it's common knowledge, maybe not to normies, but like countries like India and China do all the polluting. Yeah. You think they have better regulations <clears throat> than we do? And, and when Biden went out there Fucking morons. in Glasgow... It was it Glasgow, Ireland, where they got together for the little climate thing. Ch uh, she, she ain't show up. President, she ain't show up. He sent a little note like, yeah, my bad. Hope that works out for you, Kim folk. Opening another coal we're factory. Over here. We're over week. here. Yeah. We're over here opening up a new coal factory every week, making that money, trying to be like the center of the world, uh, implementing their system all over the world. Due, you know, with the, with the, um, with the pandemic, it just is bringing on this onslaught of uh, their system, the CCP. More surveillance, less freedom, less freedom of speech. And, and once they put that digital currency and that social credit score all on the app, 
it's game over. And it's hard for people when you read, try to, you try to read about, let's just say the coal <clears> stuff, right? And you find an article or a couple articles that are like, China hasn't built a coal factory in months. And then you find another one where like, no, they're building like one to two a month. Yeah. It's like, oh, which one do I believe? You know, the normie, granted, don't have a lot of time. They're just not going to, they're not going to find out for themselves. They're not going to keep diving into like, which one is it really not building? Are they really not building that many? Or are they building more every month? Like, which one is it? And then they listen to RPT and they're like, well, Chingo says this. Yeah. And then listen to Rachel Maddow. And like, well, Rachel, would Rachel lie to us with her little cut haircut and her glasses? Yeah, yeah man. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just a crazy time. It's a crazy time in our country, man, with like, like the, uh, the mass persuasion, the weapons grade persuasion. Um, you know, the media is the enemy. I didn't pull up the video, but did you see... Um, What's the, black, what's the guy's name? I'm seeing him drawing a blank. Don Lemon. Don Lemon. Talking yeah. about gas prices. What do you say? Where he's like... We saved four cents. Yeah, it was something like that. I was like, it's down. You know, by the end of the year, it'll be down to 301. Woo! He literally makes that noise. Yeah, this is also coming on the tail end. Uh, first of all, the motherfucker was just in Florida. Living his Taking best naps life. and shit in the sun with his husband, maskless. Uh, so, bitch, I don't want to hear nothing else about no motherfucking DeSantis. Or the Sunshine State, out your mouth. Um, okay, what else was he saying? Oh, yeah. Now, he's giving this opinion about saving three cents on the gas or whatever. Mm-hmm. This is coming on the tail end of the White House meeting up with the media, trying to get more favorable coverage. Right. I'm like, damn, bro. How much more favorable can it get? Can y'all lie for us? Can y'all twist things up? And uh, what I was saying earlier about, like, the, the mass persuasion. Uh, there was a quote from uh, Dr. Peter McCullough on the Joe Rogan. I, there's a clip all over Twitter. I might have retweeted it. But um, he was basically saying there's like mass formation. Basically saying how like it's almost like a form of big brainwashing where first you got to take away stuff that people enjoy. Like lock, isolate them and things like that. Um, man, I wonder if I did retweet it. It's, it's really good. But anyway, I don't want to jump around too much. Let me see. Here's one. Oh, no, that's uh, another, another clip from uh, McCullough. Dude, you got to listen to that one, bro. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I don't miss a Rogan, typically. I just I get to it later because I got a couple of other things I get to, you know, to prep for the show and such. Oh, yeah. Also, um, Brian Stelter on Jussie Smollier, they're changing the narrative to make him the victim again. They're like, he just wants to get back to work. He's a working actor, and he wants to get back to work. He wants to move on. Well, hold on, bitch. You just framed... Uh, uh, MAGA people, red hat wearing Trump supporters as the KKK. You had your two Nigerian homeboys jump you, throw a little rope on you, sprinkle some bleach on you in, in order to frame half of America. And now you a working actor that just wants to move on with your life. Nah, juicy. Mm-mm. Mm-mm, juicy. Uh-uh, poor juicy. Juicy Smoulier. Justice for Juicy. I wish I had, I wish I had prepped that because it was... So the chart, if, if anybody saw that, they probably know what I'm talking about. Don Lamone references uh, like a chart with the prices of gas, right? But it was super zoomed in. And when you found that chart and actually looked at the entire thing, oh, yeah. it was like, <laughs> yeah. no, you fucking retard. Like yeah. the whole thing is, is... It's like still triple or double whatever it was <laughs> just two years ago or a year ago. So basically what Rob is talking about is... Uh, there's a graph where it's like low, mm-hmm. way over here, right? They don't show you this part. It's low, and then it goes up, 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 up as Biden is in office, and then it does like little squigglies over here, but it's still high. They <laughs> zoomed in on the squigglies way to the right, right. Where, it's, where it's already high, yes. and they're like, look, there's a squiggly where it kind of went down a little bit, and it's like, no, 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 bitch, zoom out <laughs> so we can see how that shit done shot up. <laughs> Goofy ass. How to lie with statistics looking ass, boy. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm just a comedian, but I'm the one that got to school motherfuckers like, no, this is how you lie with statistics. I mean, as if the as if comedians weren't already, you know, the people that were able to stay the most and get get, you know, get away with shit, right? Now is an important time for them with people like uh Rogan and uh, Russell Brand and these people to really point this shit out like you're doing obviously because a lot of people are finally and I've been saying this since the beginning of the year. They're going to finally wake up. I think they're slowly starting to wake up to the reality of this has all been one big show. I mean, bro, how many boosters is it going to have to take? What are we at now? Four? I think so. I think we're going on five in 2022, and which if, will come. 
Yeah. And if you look at what's going on in other countries, I think, um, I don't know if it's Austria or Germany, like a lot of shit in Europe where they're going to now say 60 and up, you require to take it. And if not, you're going to get a fine. And just a lot of stuff where, um, man, I think it's Germany where you got to, little kids got to show, oh no, that's New York. <laughs> little kids got to show their papers now. Oh, five year olds, yeah. I think like five or 12 year olds. And it's like, well, shit, bro, I got a 13 year old and I got a three year old. And it's like, I can't imagine my kid, Mija, show them your papers. What kind of parents go along with this shit and, and don't ask no questions? I guess you just trust all of a sudden Big Pharma's your friend. You know, Rogan has that quote, uh, and a lot of people have said it, not just him, where it's like, uh, it's the circle where it's like, tough times create tough men, you know, tough men create easy times, easy times create weak men, weak men create hard times, something like that, right? We're in that, we're seeing that happen. The, the fourth turn. Yeah, we're seeing that happen live because a lot of the people, and what they're doing here to us, to everybody, is that they're trying to beat you into submission, right? And we've talked about this for months. Demoralize you. Demoralize you, make you obviously less educated, make you, uh, make you want to answer or ask less questions, just like, what are you giving me, right? Okay, I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, you're, you're not up. allowed. You're not allowed to ask questions. The, minute, then, the minute you ask questions, now you vax hesitant. And they're going to constantly hammer you until you just give in. And we're seeing this, especially on the coasts, dude. It's so weird because. I always thought, and I'm sure a lot of other people thought, that people on the coast did have their bearings about themselves. They, they were of the more elite, you know, type of people. They were more educated, you know, for the most part. And they're the ones that are easily the most susceptible to whatever is put in front of them on, on the screen. You know, when I first realized that in the music business, when I saw that, you know, in the South, Texas specifically, you could have, I know this is a bad analogy, but like you could have a viable business in terms of like ticket sales and just, you know, you're moving product, you're moving units like CDs or whatever, record stores, and you're pumping out product. And, you know, people from New York fly down, people from LA, they want to come sign you, they bring their suits and they, they try to treat you like a country bumpkin. But it's like, uh, no, just because y'all have the media over there and y'all get more exposure over there, that's what MTV is and all this stuff like but we're the ones selling units yeah like quiet is kept like you could go ask well you'd have to get in the time machine but like you would be able to walk into a store in dallas or san antonio and be like let me see your top 10 sellers it's not gonna be who you think it is mm -hmm. it's like really because i thought shania twain and you know these people and i thought this guy and i thought these people were the big the big ones because they're the ones that are on tv they're the ones that are like doing the new year's thing and it's like no it's these these are the people that are selling at this particular store, they're selling way more than all these people. So that's when you start to be start to realize, like, wait. Oh, so you realized that a long time ago. It, it, it was in a different sense, meaning. It was in a political sense. No, it wasn't a political sense, but it'd be like, I understood how some folks were elitist. I understood how you might go have a, a meeting in Manhattan, and they're trying to look at you like you're a country bumpkin farmer who won't sell their farm yeah. to the guy in the suit with the suitcase, the briefcase. And you start to realize, like, uh, this is all like, you know, it's like, okay, y'all are highly leveraged and y'all are well funded and y'all got this big fancy office and this marketing budget and this and that. But that don't dictate quality. That doesn't dictate like who's really, you know, who, who people are loyal to, who has like, like, for example, when um, the label I was on for briefly for distribution, uh, Asylum Records. When the uh, the main executive told me, "Hey, we just signed Little Boosie and Webby uh, from uh, from Louisiana," I was like, "Oh, okay, dope. Like y'all are really, or like we just signed Switcher House, Mike Jones and them, Paul Wall." And it's like, okay, y'all are coming down here and seeing who's really mm. moving product, yeah, and y'all are co opting and and partnering up and um, maneuvering into the mix because mm -hmm. y'all need us, right? See, and and I know it's not the best analogy when it comes to politics and stuff like that but but the midwest and texas and stuff like that you know we've been considered flyover and it's like oh man those people are backwards they're not as progressive they're weird with their i mean i ain't gonna lie i used to hate on the bible belt you know because when i was young i wanted to party yeah right sure. so if i was in like tyler texas i'd be like this is fucking bunk you know what I mean? Like the clubs are closing early. There's nothing to do. Like where are the strip clubs? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, dude, this is the Bible Belt. They don't rock like that. It's a dry county, yada yada. But you know, now I'm a parent. And that, shit like that. That actually, here I want. I want to play this um, history. 
You know how YouTube has YouTube shorts? They have the yeah. little YouTube clips. Do you ever watch it, like, sit and kind of scroll I, through I, those? I look at a couple. Here okay, and there. shit. I'll try to find one I'm looking for, and if not, it's all good. While you do that, uh, Rob recommended I listen to Theo Vaughn with uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has a book out, The Real Dr. Fauci. The Real Anthony Fauci. The Real Anthony Fauci. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mr. Fauci. Yeah. And uh, that one was very interesting. There's a There are a, a lot of books between like Dr. Peter Navarro in Trump time, where he tells you all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Uh, Bobby Kennedy's book. Uh, th- I don't know if Peter McCullough. No, I, I think he's featured on other books. But there's like a handful of books. What really happened in Wuhan. Oh, where it's all this, coming out. Check this out. Uh, I don't have my Bluetooth on the board, but I'll hold it up to the microphone. It's called, um, I just found it really entertaining. I want to get your take on it. It's called Gen X uh, versus uh, Late Millennials. Next talk. Hello, brother. I'm around and this happened. Dad, I got a question. How can I help you, sweetheart? Why do you hate millennials? I don't hate millennials. We just don't get along. We're cut from a different cloth. Gen Xers were raised what right and wrong is, and that's it. Millennials are raised right and wrong is subjective to whoever they're around. I was raised if you did something wrong and you failed, you fucked it up, you did it again. They're raised, they didn't fail, they just didn't quite do it the way it was supposed to be, whatever that fucking means. I got punished, got my ass kicked, they get a fucking hug. Okay, it's totally different. I got a trophy for winning, they get a trophy for showing up. Gen X was raised with grit, thick skin, determination, and respect. We plugged into families and jobs and society. Millennials want to bend all of those things around their feelings. How does, it, how does the world fit them? Difference. Fucking wrong. Wow. <laughs> Dude. On point. On point. Pretty on point for a lot of millennials. Obviously, you can't, you know, paint with a broad brush, but that's what we're seeing right now. Yeah. That was very well put. I don't know if he memorized that, but I really like the part where he says, like, Millennials try to bend all these institutions around, around their, their feelings. feelings. Straight up, man. And I wonder how much of a role postmodernism and critical theory, um, you know, where everything is like, uh, you know, well, facts are subjective. There's no such thing as a fact. And what is a fact? It's like two plus two can equal five. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I thought the whole p- purpose of math was there's a, there's a right answer, there's a wrong answer. But apparently not. Now that they uh, they're trying to look at it through this lens, where math is now racist. You know, I mean, I came up in the time during high school where they started to people started to make the argument in the case, and it kind of made sense to me at the time. Where it's like, uh, you know, the SAT is what is it culturally biased, hmm. meaning that some of the questions, you know, they might be asking stuff that some of these poor kids just can't relate to. And I, I can't remember a specific question on SAT that was a long time ago but the argument was that they'd be like you know how many you know if you're on a yacht and the <laughs> the thing breaks and this and that what how many would you whatever whatever and it's like well some poor kids have never been on a yacht they don't know what that is you know what I mean so I don't even know if that's an accurate example hmm. but that's what they were trying to do so what is Sarah Silverman what does she say to Joy about Joy oh, Reid one of my favorite ones here that I think we're gonna rip <clears> on for a little while so are you familiar with the tweet that she put tweeted about Joy Reid and her when she uh, sorry let me just start over she tweeted out an article Joy Reid Joy Reid okay. about Ron DeSantis okay when he was talking about the uh, Florida um, guard the Florida oh yeah yeah the Florida State National Guard uh, yes, Florida State yes, Guard yes uh-huh. yes, yes, yes. Uh, so then Sarah, oh, found it. Oh, I, I already know what you're talking about. Right, right her. And she corrected her saying like, there's many states who have had. Yeah, not just, so this is a tweet right here down there at the bottom. Oh, here <laughs> we go. All right, so Joy, Joy, <laughs> fucking Joy Reid. Jesus Christ. So y'all know this is fascisty bananas, right? And she retweeted a CNN article where it says, DeSantis proposes a new civilian military force in Florida that he would control. And then Sarah Silverman put, Please read the article before you post this stuff. You're a news outlet. The truth has to matter. Right. So then she started getting attacked by all her fans on Twitter. That's and, what happens when you go woke, bro. Yeah. The, the snake will eventually eat its own tail, right? So that was the tweet. And this was her on her podcast, which is so funny to see all these super, super lefties that have started podcasting recently, you know, over the pandemic and just over the last few years or so. And as they talk on podcasts, it feels like they get more attacked because they do let themselves open you know, to just saying more stuff and then it gets out there and then people are like, you fucking bigoted, whatever. 
Let's see this. So this was her on her podcast talking about it. Hi, we can't even speak anyone our own party without punishment. One of the hosts of The View is like, what hubris for Sarah Silverman to accuse a black woman of not reading? Oi, Jesus H, what the? F I fucking, I surrender. Good grief. I don't, I don't want any trouble. I She's waking up. Believe I need to say this, but I did not criticize Joy Ann because she's black, but because she's a, a Harvard educated journalist with the responsibility, ideally, of showing the whole picture and not just a piece of a picture. Oh, so I like how she said, Oi. Yeah. That's a Jewish thing. I know. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, congratulations, Sarah Silverman. You know, <clears throat> the Democratic Party. The Democrats, I don't know at what point, because I, I, I don't know the whole history. I know they started the KKK. Mm -hmm. I know they're the ones that had the slaves. You know, a Republican named Lincoln had to come free him. Um, you know, but hey, congratulations. You're waking up to the fact that I don't know what the Democrats on paper, what they're, you know, especially like one like Tulsi Gabbard or like what are some of the main tenets, mm -hmm. right, of the Democratic Party? In 2021? Or I guess more historic okay. from, from a, if you boil it down and you remove all the woke shit, right? But in 2021, Sarah Silverman, I mean, the fact that you identify as like a lefty, a lefty and Democrat and all this, you're now playing with fire. That's, that's the crazy part. Like I've, I'm getting attacked. I get attacked from lefties. That's why I get attacked by. Yeah. And she's a lefty. <clears throat> Getting attacked by lefties. Yeah. Why? Like what she just said. We're not allowed to call shit out. Like I could, I could criticize Trump. Like, man, why you ain't pardon Assange? Yeah. Why you ain't fire Fauci? You know, why you let them people lie to you so you could bomb these series or whatever? Yeah. Um, One of the big problems too yeah. with her saying that and is that later or maybe in that same episode, <laughs> she would just say, these crazy white supremacist QAnon supporters don't like our new movie or don't like our new stop animation, right? And it's, it's like the white, Christmas thing. Right. It's our, you know, white supremacists, these fucking crazy evil Trump supporters. It's like, how, 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 how? How do you do that? How do you go from making sense like this, sounding like you're going to maybe be red pilled soon or you're on your track to, to getting there, but still stand behind shit like white supremacists don't like my movie? Well, I think, I think, okay, but she literally said white supremacists? She has said that before. Okay. Well, look here. Uh, I've only seen the trailer, uh, Sarah. And one thing that stood out was that they were picking on Santa Claus because he was a white man. They were like, oh, this job has historically been held by white males. Mm -hmm. And like, why can't a Jewish female? Or is that what it was? Was it going to be a Jewish character? I don't think it was. She was like purple. She was like a fucking alien uh, elf. Like, I, I don't think it had to do with Jewish. Or I could have swore in the beginning of the trailer it said. No, you're spot on with what you said so far. I thought it said something about Judaism in the beginning of the trailer. Oh, maybe where, I missed where, that. Where it was like, uh, you know, or at some point there was something mentioned about like, yeah, I know Jewish people are mainly white or something like that. Mm. I don't know where I got that. So that is very interesting to see Sarah Silverman get a little taste of what a lot of people who are in the center or independent or on the right, they can't stand that type of shit. And, and I guess both sides do do it to an extent, meaning like, oh, they leave stuff out. They try to frame stuff to just scare you or whatever. But she was rightfully calling out Joy Reid saying, hey, lady, it's y'all making it sound like DeSantis want to have his own little militia and go around doing crazy shit. But really, it's for like faster response in case there's a natural disaster, in case anything goes down. The point is DeSantis is having a little bit of a feud with the federal government. And he's basically saying, like, we got to have our own shit. I'm surprised they don't already. There's, they would be the 23rd state to have their own state guard, which is what it is. It's and like a we have, guard. Texas has one, Yeah, right? Texas, New York has one, California has one. It's so, it was just such a dumb thing to tweet. Y'all know this is fascist street bananas, right? Right. It's like, lady, lady, uh, we can, we've already been, we've already established the fact that if you're going to wait around for the federal government to come save you and take care of you or help you, don't <clears> hold <throat> your breath. Ask New Orleans. Let, let me show you this. Not to beat a, beat a dead horse here, but this was the article that uh, I believe she had tweeted, right? So this is from CNN. 
And uh, this is the title. DeSantis proposes a new civilian military force in Florida that he would control. Now, if you were a normie, if this is if this is where you were going, if you were going to CNN politics to get your news for the day. Oh, my God. Right. Yes. So on top of that, you would read the title, and then maybe you might read the first sentence here. Okay. St. Petersburg, Florida. St. Pete. Uh, Florida Gov. Ron DeSantis wants to reestablish a World War II era civilian military force that he, not the Pentagon, would control. Boom. How dare he? You wouldn't read any further. You would tweet it out right after that. You would say, oh, my God, post it on Facebook. And that's how that shit spreads. But if you read the entire thing, they did an OK job explaining it, minus the way they fucking started it off. That you know they would be the twenty third state, and if you if you went back through history and found out that the National Guard itself was the first civilian militia before it was the National Guard, it was the civilian militia, the people that were backing up their states, right? And it does go back to pre World War Two, World War One, the Spanish American War. It goes way back, right? But it's just like, why would you do that, Joy Reid? You know, you Harvard educate, which by the way, she studied film at Harvard. She's not like a I don't know, classically trained journalist. And there is affirmative action. There you go. I didn't want to say it, but I think we all were thinking it. You know, unfortunately, uh, I mean, she might be smart enough to get into regular Harvard, but (laughs) but there is affirmative action. That's a problem. Yes, sir. And it's a known fact that, like, they hate on Asians. They're like, there's way too many Asian students in here. Um, White college students got to lie, say there's something else, just just to get a fair shake. Um, how much more, how much more shenanigans got to be unearthed about CNN between the uh, horse school debacle, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, trying to frame Rogan as a crazy QAnon, a conspiracy person for taking a Nobel Peace Prize winning medicine, which, which there, I, I can't remember if it was Bobby Kennedy's episode or Dr. Peter McCullough episode. I've been consuming a lot of this science, right? Mm-hmm. But they'll say things like, um, yeah, Haiti, Haiti and Africa, they got way lower cases than us. Maybe it's like a body fat thing. Maybe they have a younger population. Uh, maybe because in Africa, they got to take um, things like HCQ or Iver- I think ivermectin every Sunday mm-hmm. to help with deworm from malaria and shit like that because of where they live. And there's some people who theorize that maybe that's why they did better. You know what I'm saying? But really, I, I highly recommend Dr. Peter McCullough's episode with Rogan. It's, I think it's the newest one where they just talk a lot about like how in America, academia, he said, he said uh, man, we got like 300 medical schools and like didn't nobody present no new information. And you're talking to these doctors and you're watching the news and they got doctors on there and nobody's talking about early treatments. Nobody's talking about the, the uh, mo- what is it, monoclonal yeah, antibodies. antibodies. Nobody's talking about that. And he's like, it's key that if you get the Rona, you got to jump on it early. You can't let it be all up in your body 14 days. And now you're getting these little micro blood clots in your lungs and shit. And then he was talking about the poke saying like the, 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 the soccer players falling over. Mm-hmm. We played that compilation last episode um, where like heart damage people. And he said, he, he said, it's like, um, like, how many, I forget how many, I think like 200 million Americans or something have gotten the poke, mm-hmm. but why don't you see everybody falling over? And he's just like, well, it's, it's just like the Rona. Not everybody's going to die from the Rona. Yeah. Not everybody's going to get, not everybody's going to need a heart transplant from uh, heart damage due to the poke. But that myocarditis is real. Uh, they talked about how if you're a young male, if you're a boy, right? A young boy has, is going to have a worse time with effects from the poke Mm -hmm. than the Rona itself. Yes. So it's like, why are they so hell bent on making everybody get the poke instead of saying, well, hold on. Do you have antibodies? Well, what age are you? You know, should we prioritize? What about early treatments? When you start asking those questions is when you start going down the financial road, who's got what bag, who secured what, you know, amount of federal funding for these, you know, vaccines and so on and so forth. And then it starts to fall apart. The whole argument starts to fall apart, and you can see that, oh, okay, money, money, money. Money, but then also, like, power, control. Yeah. Like, oh, we could just make them do stuff. We can make them jump up and down. Like, you know, we can control shit. We can... Was it ma- Matt Taibbi that was talking about how much their, like, big pharma funds, you know, whether it's Facebook or the DNC or... Uh, the press, or like the, press. the media. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know, and 
Yeah, I think it was Peter. No. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, real quick. I'm going I'm to jump in and then Go take ahead. over. I think it was Matt Taibbi, and I think, he, I, I think he said, like, pretty much if you boil it down, Anderson Cooper's... Um, 10 of the $12 million of his salary comes from Big Pharma. It might have been said. Bobby Kennedy. 10 of his what? 10 of his $12 million a year salary comes from Big Pharma. Yeah. And I think Pfizer specifically. Yes. They're like, so he's always going to... you by Pfizer. He's always going to promote the jab. Yes. They know who they work for. Yeah. Guys, like, this isn't... We're not making this shit up. Like, you can go look this up. Send, you know, once this turns into a clip, send it out. You know, be the ones that help us distribute this by proxy, as uh, Ringo says and uh, Project Veritas says, because... You have to hear it for the first time. Some people haven't heard this for the first time. If you hear it for the first time, then you go do a little bit of research. I think you'll change your own mind, and you don't need us or anybody else to change it for you. Or be a force multiplier. Be a force multiplier. Our ranking as a news political commentary, pod- yeah. commentary podcast, it, we're, we're moving up on the charts. Uh, we're reaching more people. I try to red pill my parents every time I get a chance. Uh, my mom rode with me, rode with me to the funeral uh, yesterday. That we attended a family member and um, the whole time, boy, I gave her an earful. <laughs> and like, I wasn't feeling well because the allergies and stuff, but I gave her an earful. What'd she say? I was just like, wait, first, how does it, how does it start? Uh, Did she say something oh, or you say something? Oh, ready? This is how it started. Yeah, Bodicita, your cousin, you know, it's, it's such a shame. You know, crime is going up. You know, it's because that governor in the wheelchair, he's letting everybody run around with them guns. No. You know, because everybody got a gun now. Oh, so man. that's why, that's why your cousin, that's what happened. That's why that happened to him. Because, and I said, I said, <laughs> I stopped the car. I said, woman, get out. Get out of my vehicle, mother. No, I said, I said, mom, I said, um, Criminals, road ragers, uh, repeat offenders, people that get out on that bell, bell reform, that low bell, these crooked ass district attorneys. I said, talk to an officer, ask them who's committing all these crimes. You know what I'm saying? It's these little juveniles and shit. Uh, it takes longer to process them and book them and they're out before you can even take the cuffs off. And there was a story in Baytown where uh, a, a, a dude had got killed, right? And then, like, his friends and family were gathering, like, at an open field, like a park or something, like, celebrate, you know, life celebration type of thing. It wasn't the actual funeral. It was, like, somewhere else. Well, the people that killed Homeboy, they went and shot up about 14 people at the, at the 50 people gathering. Like, not only did they shoot the guy, they went to go <laughs> shoot his friends and family. There were kids there. And anyway, my point is, I told my mom, that's where it started. And mm. I, was like, I was like, you cannot. I said, first of all, Constitution. <clears throat> Second Amendment, you have responsible gun owners. They're not the ones going around putting pistols in people's face. You know what I'm saying? Robbing people at the Walmart, which, which that happened to her. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, crime is going up. You know, this shit turning into Chicago like a motherfucker. So California has got some of the most stringent gun laws, right? So Saturday, <clears throat> when did Vicente die? Was it Friday or Saturday? When, when did we what? Vicente? Oh, Vicente. Uh, Oh, no me uh, let's just say it was Friday. I think mm-hmm. the next day on Saturday, they were having like a gathering around the uh, Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame. And there was a shooter across the street from an apartment that was shooting at the group of people. From an apartment? From an apartment bu- uh, window building. That's whatever. the dumbest shit you could ever do. So It's like, we know where you live now. Bro. Yeah, one suspect was in custody from what I remember reading. I don't think anybody was injured from what I read, but I mean, that's just sheer luck. Luckily, nobody was injured. And the, again, California? You think you can just go open carry? You think you can just willy-nilly have a gun? No, it's fucking difficult. But criminals will be criminals. Yeah, California does not have Governor Abbott. Cal- Do they have constitutional carry? No. Well, they're going to need it pretty fucking soon. Because, like, bro, it, it, is, like, it was already dangerous on the road, as it was, right? Now you got these road rage people, uh, motherfucking people shoot you on the goddamn freeway. And then my sister, she sent me a ring ring camera video she shared a video from her ring the uh-huh. doorbell where where she lives it's like a quiet private little subdivision that's known for nice christmas decorations that's where kids want to go trick-or-treat right yeah they get money in there and they got a stop sign right there right in front of her house is a stop sign man these two motherfucking trucks <laughs> blew like fast and it was rainy and everything and it's like what in the figgity fuck Mm-hmm. So, you have the uh, Biden on Fallon clip. 
I do. I actually wanted to play this first. Did you see... Um, here, fuck it. We've been talking about crime and all this. Maybe you saw it. I'm sure you did. Tim Kennedy posted this one. All right, what is it? <laughs> Looks like a what, cell phone place or something? Yeah. She said no. She said no, and she said everyone get out. Yeah, lady with a stroller, bro. And then she thinks quick on her feet, closes it, locks him inside. Oh, great. And here's where it gets good. Uh-huh. Let's see if he got a real gun or not. Fuck, I'm stuck. Okay. Yeah, he got a real gun. What's he trying to shoot? The lock? Yeah. He broke the glass? Broke the glass. <laughs> yeah, you going to jail, bro. <sighs> bro, man, come on, man. Okay. As he's as as we watch this. Yeah. This this young man chose a life of crime. And now he's begging with patrons walking on the sidewalk to open the door. Oh, he's begging on his knees. Um, these inner city Democrats have set you up. They set you up for failure, sir. I don't know what kind of education this young man had. Yeah. I don't know if he watches CNN. Police. So I hope you follow Tim Kennedy MMA. He goes down, key takeaway, she saved all of their lives and goes down and um, tells you how. This type of stuff, great, yes. Uh, great caption as well. Yeah. This type of stuff, I forward to my sisters. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? One of them, I'm trying to red pill. One of them, one of them was red pill way before me. Okay. <laughs> she was the first Republican in the family. And I'm guessing we, the older one? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, her sense. husband's military and, and, um, and I, I think she resisted him for a while too. Uh -huh. But, um, I'm not trying to, like, take the bad guy's side, right? Sure. But if you were to, like, rewind, rewind his whole life, and, and try to get an assessment, like, if you just saw it in high speed, like, okay, who misled you? Where did you go astray? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what made you so desperate? Who was, who were your leaders? Who, who influenced you? Who were your father figures? Like, was there a father in the home? What kind of schooling and education? You, you see what I'm saying? What, totally. led, what led to this level of desperation? Are you already like a career criminal where it's like, man, I don't, I don't have a trade. I don't know how to weld. I don't, I'm not, I don't know carpentry. Like, I never got into martial arts. Right. You know, I never had like that coach that pulled me aside. I never had that neighborhood leader, a real big homie that said, you need a life strategy. So you're not stuck in the belly of the beast. Was that L.A.? I think it was, but I didn't. I didn't didn't catch okay. it. Okay. Uh, regardless, I, it doesn't matter if it's Baltimore or or San Diego, right? It doesn't matter where Chicago, that was. Chicago, whatever. Exactly. So, part of me is kind of like I would love to take a look into what led to this decision. What kind of schooling did you have? Like, did you drop out? When did you drop out? Did you go to college? Did you not? Um, who influences you? Did somebody like if you were to have them fill out a survey or a quiz? Do you believe that the world is rigged against you? Do you believe that white supremacy is, is why you're in this position? You know what I'm saying? Like, did you grow up in poverty? How, how we, what were your, what was your plan to break the, the cycle and the chains of poverty? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, man. Yeah. Like, go ahead. No, well, you're saying, what you're saying is great. And I think that people need to hear that. And, and I'm not trying to make excuses for them. No, not at all. Cause I, when I watched that, Initially, the first time I watched it, I was extremely upset that somebody would do that, especially when you walk in there and the first thing you see is just a mom with, in the, with a baby in the stroller. And that's it. Two workers and a mom with a baby in the stroller. Then you watch it again and you let some of the anger kind of fade and you do have a little bit of empathy for that a person like that who was, I don't know if empathy is the right word. Yeah, yeah it's probably not. Yeah. It, it, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like everything you just said, it's whatever makes your brain say rewind and let's see what path he took. Basically, is, like, are you a product of the system? Yeah. In other words... 
Did the Democrats yeah. set it up in your city to where they told you that white the, the, the game is rigged against you? Right. You're oppressed. Instead of saying, hey, young man, like if somebody had approached him in eighth grade and like, hey, 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 let me holler at you, man. Um, You know, what's going on at home? You know what I'm saying? What's the plan for high school? In other words, if he had learned like welding or, you know, carpentry or just some kind of trade. And if they told him, look, bro, even beyond that, if they told him, hey, man, if you have a good strategy, if you, if you have a, a diverse, you could have options. For example, do you know that Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies want to hire people like you? Like they're under a lot of pressure to hire more people of color. Like, they're going to get in trouble if they keep hiring white boys, yeah. right? Yeah. So there are Fortune 500 companies. Like, imagine if you just rewinded and went back to that point where, like, hypothetically, let's say there was, like, a, a gangster in the hood, a drug dealer, or somebody who... Hey, hey, little homie, let me holla at you. You know what I'm saying? Like, the one, that's a problem. What's up, Fonzo? What's up, Fonzo? Yeah, Fonzo Blunt. Like, if you were to rewind to, like, he was 14 years old, you know what I'm saying? His father died. A dude in the neighborhood took him under his wing, shot him, the, uh, showed him the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Versus, hey, there was a coach in high school that said, hey, man, it's, you know, you don't want to end up like these other folk. You know, if, if, you, if you have a good life strategy... You won't have to do this. Yeah. And I just saw this thing on YouTube the other day. I was going down a little jujitsu rabbit hole and there was a TV pilot. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's a 30 minute TV pilot. I don't know why this show never got picked up. It was uh, the Gracie brothers, uh, Henner and uh, Heron. him. Yeah. Henner and Heron. It's the, they had a, a TV pilot. It looks like, it might be a few years old, right? Okay. Just looking at, you know. Just by the way it was shot? Uh, just, uh, I guess, kind of like the way they look a little bit. Um, it was a great show, bro. Basically, it starts off with a viral video of, of a, uh, at a gas station, out of context, viral video out of context, uh, of a black dude saying, I'm from the Bronx. I'm out here by myself. I ain't scared of these fools. And it was like two, white, two big corn-fed white boys, mm -hmm. right? And, <clears throat> damn, pinch nerve like a motherfucker. They got into a little scuffle, right? The, the black dude from the Bronx, he ends up in a very bad situation, bro. Like, I'll just describe it to y'all, uh, but go watch it. They get into a little scuffle, and he, they fall over by, like, a, a parked car. Like, it looks like a Stripes gas station or something, right? They fall by the parked car. The parked car, they're, like, damn near leaning on the bumper. The parked car, like, starts pulling out. So now they fall onto the pavement. Somehow, some way, uh, the black dude from the Bronx, his shirt ends up over his head, like to where his hands are still in the sleeves. Mm -hmm. So now his hands are occupied. Um, the dude ends up on top of him, the white boy, big corn fed white boy, ends up on top of him, I guess, full mount, starts doing some ground and pound type shit, right? Homeboy, like, twists around to, like, protect his face, I guess, but now he gave him his back. So now he's still popping him, pop, like, boom hard dude all on the side of the head fucked him up really bad it was brutal finally they come the other white boy pulls the other white boy come on let's get up out of here the dude was knocked out so bad that he his 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 uh, arms are still in his sleeves he's laying uh belly down on the pavement and it's just his upper body like trying to get up like a like a little worm to where like his whole lower body is still like so it looked weird he's just like like totally out of it the Gracie brothers are like, we're going to reach out to them. They call them. Hey, man, we'd love to give you some free jujitsu classes. And, well, the, the kid ended up losing his job. He worked at a sandwich shop up the block. He's like, so what happened in this video? He's like, bro, me and my friend were walking. And these people, like, almost ran us over. There were some things yelled in exchange out of the window. He said he called them the N-word and all kinds of shit. So now he's like, I'm from the Bronx. I don't back down. Yada, yada. And, and then what happened, happened, right? So there was some context missing. Mm. It looked like he was just... Instigating the whole thing. Like he... <clears throat> the other guys instigated, it mm. seemed like, right? But anyway, it, it just made him look like, you know, uh, just like bad character, stuff like that. So now the Gracie brothers, now they're giving him a little bit of training, like I think three days worth. But throughout... This is such a good pilot. 
if I worked at a network, if I was a TV producer, if I was an intern at a network, I would have literally taken this tape file, whatever, and I would have gone to an executive, somebody in there, a producer, and I'd have been like, you got to put this on there. You got to, you got to, y'all got to get a season. We need 10 more episodes of this because it had heart. Like they, they, they're like inviting him over for dinner and they got to know him. And he's like, well, my dad died when I was 13. Mm. After that, everything went downhill. Um, I left the Bronx. I ended up here in Arizona. Well, Arizona is where the fight happened. And, um, you know, you could just tell he needed love. He needed guidance. And they were trying to show him that, hey, dude, it's good to know how to defend yourself, but you also need to walk away from shit. Yes. Like, that, you don't want them to control you, control your emotions. And then they put him to the final test at the very end of the episode. Such a good pilot. They put him to the test to where um, he, uh, it's the Henner says, hey, man, go give me some coconut juice. Da, 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 da. Right? Yeah. Go give me some coconut juice. Bring me back to change. Whatever. And he's like, all right, bet. And he walks out. And they had some actors, like dudes in white tees. What's up, fool? Where you from, bitch? Yada, yada. Like, they're just going to jump them, right? Because they're in California. So yeah. it seemed totally believable. that some couple cholos in white tees and be like, what's up, bitch? Where you from? Totally fucking realistic. Yeah, I don't want no problems, man. I don't want no problems, man. So he passed the test. He was backing up. And it was two of them, right? But he was avoiding the conflict. He didn't get into the same old, same old. And then that's when it was such a heartfelt moment where the Gracies run out like, yo, 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 chill, chill. Hey, man, dude, you passed the test. Oh, man, y'all got me. (laughs) And they just, dude, it was such a heartfelt moment. Like, there was friendship. He grew as a person. His character was improved. He learned. Because throughout, they would ask him, like, if some shit went down, he's like, oh, I got to fight. You know, I'm not backing down from shit. Like, Anytime they would tell him, don't let people control you. It's not worth it. You got to know how to defend yourself, but you need to know how to avoid conflict. Do you know? That sounds like a great show. It was excellent. Show. It was excellent. I feel like we could go to any school. We could go to Jeff's school and find people who have been in those situations, and that's why they joined his academy, and make that show out of anybody's gym. You could literally go, the cool thing, I would take that same concept and go from gym to gym. Go to Gracie Baja, go to you know uh, Revolution, go to wherever, go to Crew Bobs, and you would find those characters in those gyms. One might be, you know, Regis, who's the boxing champion over there at, at Crew Bob's, or it might be Derek Lewis, obviously, a UFC heavyweight. And you can make that show out of the people that have already gone through that system of wanting to change their lives, got into mixed martial arts, or got into just uh, jujitsu or whatever, and paint that same kind of picture, which would be a pretty fun show. Now, what if the Gracies went and found this guy that was like uh, locked in that store with a gun? Yeah. And he was like, hey, man, here's some coconut juice. <laughs> What were, what the fuck, bro? What were you thinking? Like, can you imagine, bro? Like, were you just like step in like aliens or like God or something like whoop, as he's there begging, please, please, I have nothing. What's up, bro? Oh my God, who are y'all? Hey, bro, we're aliens. We just want to holler at you. Like, what the fuck were you thinking, man? I just needed some money, man. Like, I don't know. Well, under the circumstances, you got to do some time for fucking going. Of in course, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying like, oh, we're gonna bail you out. Like, I really don't. I, re- I don't know anything about that kid. For all I know, for all I know, he's on drugs. Sure. For all I know, like, he wanted more money for more drugs. I mean, there's no telling. Do you know who Jason Wilson is? No. Okay. Uh, you have to go listen to this podcast because uh, you've, painted, you've painted a picture of a Henner and Huron character who went viral for... Um, it's, he was on Rogan, by the way. Uh, let me see if this is the full video and if it is. Let's see. 42 seconds. I believe that they're asking him about this video. Wait a minute. Whose podcast is this? I don't know who this is. Okay. Actually, I'm not even going to play that one. I just wrote down Jason Wilson. In yeah, it's... Uh, I don't like that guy, so I'm not going to play that video. <laughs> that was the guy that was like on a Disney show that we played a while back that was like super, super feminist, CRT kind of character. Mm. But he's... I guess he's reviewing uh, Jason's... One of his speeches. It went famous. So who is Jason Wilson? He is a martial arts instructor, but he went viral about a year or two ago when he was trying to get one of his karate students to break the board, remember? And the, the kid couldn't do it, and he started crying. And he's like, it's not, it's not, it's not that, you know, you've done it before or whatever, and he kind of talked him through it. I'm trying to find, because he reposted it from time to time, but his podcast on Rogan was phenomenal. Okay. Uh, let me see. Is this it? Oh, that looks like. Turn up. Let's go. Come on, grab. Don't let go. Grab. 
This isn't it, but this is a good example. Is that jujitsu? I think it's. Uh, I think it is. Yeah. Oh, poor kid. That's good. It's so jacked up for men and boys that we can't even be emotional. You couldn't just say you're nervous. That? Grab it again. Say you're nervous. Loud, yo. Yes! Keep saying it. Yes! Good, don't let go. Get back up. Say it. I love you. Say it again. I love you. Say it again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He didn't let go when he said he was nervous. He was able, he was able to hold the grip. But he's, a, he's also like a... He's basically all That's about... That's like me in class right now. <laughs> cool. he's, he's, I'm nervous. <laughs> he's, uh, Today he, is day three. He's a coach. He's a martial arts coach. A uh, long time martial arts coach. He's an he's a, he's a author. And he's also like um, a youth kind of minister character. And um, his, his message is great, man. You got to listen to his episode. Of the Rogan. More kids need that. The yeah. more, the, dude, I wish, I mean, it's never too late, right? I'm 42, but yeah, yeah, never. barely getting into this shit. But like, I wish they had put me in that shit when I was young. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't turn out to be a criminal, nothing like that. But um, we need more people like that. We need more kids to be in more positive stuff like that to where you can get the character, you know what I mean? Gain yeah. character and, and have a good mentor and, and the confidence and things like that. And that way, can you imagine... If, if that person that was in there with the gun in that cell phone store, whatever it was, if they just had a Jason Wilson in their life, bro. Yeah. We need more real big homies. Stop, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, man? Um, stop letting these fake ass motherfuckers send you up, up shit's creek. Yeah. They're, like they're a crash dummy. You. Yeah. yeah. Like a crash dummy, bro. It's episode 1692, by the way, of the Joe Rogan experience. 1692 with Jason Wilson. If you guys uh, overlooked it or like, I don't, that'll happen sometimes. You'll be like, I don't know who this guy is. I'm going to skip it. Yeah. And I do that. Some a lot. of the best, some of the best ones. Plus them hoes be like three hours and shit. It's like, <laughs> okay, I ain't, I ain't finished the last one here before. So we'll wrap up with, uh, with Biden. But before that, let me play it just like the first 30 seconds or so of uh, John Sossel's video about the fact checkers. Facebook censored me. Now I've learned that Facebook also censors a bunch of people who report on science. Please welcome Michael Schellenberger. People like an environmentalist who Time Magazine listed among heroes of the environment. That's Michael Schellenberger. You're going to need a lot more clean energy. Facebook also censors. There's a man named one of the world's most influential people of the 21st century. That's statistician and environmentalist Bjorn Lomborg. And they censor science writer and New York Times contributing columnist John Tierney. They accuse all of us of spreading misinformation. But really, the people guilty of spreading misinformation are Facebook and its fact checkers. To do the fact checking, Facebook partners with groups like these, all of them approved by something called the Pointer Institute. It calls itself a global leader in journalism and claims it has a commitment to nonpartisanship and fairness. But they're hardly nonpartisan. Just look at their website, their eagerness to honor left-leaning reporters, and their push to decolonize the media and change language shows their leftist bias. Pointer once even apologized after it tried to blacklist conservative news sites. Yet absurdly, this is who Facebook partners with to certify who will censor all of us. So it's a seven minute uh, rant, not rant, but video from uh, John Stossel. And that, so Pointer is what uh, Tim Poole and his organization, organization is aiming to combat. So his 503C <coughs> is a nonprofit that is going to also be a, uh, one of the aspects of it is going to be, it's going to be a fact checker. So it's going to fact check the fact checkers mm -hmm. and it's going to fact check all the other publications the way that Pointer claims to do for Facebook, but in an honest way. And the interesting thing is that he's honing in on the relationship between Facebook and these quote unquote third party mm -hmm. or whatever, right? But they're all in cahoots. And he's also focusing mainly on the climate change conversation. However, the fact checking and all this BS, it goes beyond climate. It, it talk, you know, anything from like Mike Lindell is saying XYZ, boom, fact check, anything. Yeah, you yeah. could tweet something, anything, I could post something. Um, and, and again, 
like I was saying earlier, Americans and humans in general, we've arrived in this precarious situation where you have important decisions and you need information and you're having to go to Joe Rogan. Yeah. You're having to go to Joe Rogan, a UFC commentator, stand-up comedian, meathead, to, to get some facts. Real facts. The to get some fa- at, facts. At least to get some nuance, right? Because fact, what is a fact, right? That's a problem. That's a problem. At, you know, at least to get some nuance in terms of, okay, what did this, what did this journalist say? What does Matt Taibbi say? What, and I will say, have you finished the Matt Taibbi one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think I'm done with it. I might, I might be close to done with it. I like how when he would say some left-leaning type of stuff, he would, um, what's the word I'm looking for? What caveat it? It would just kind of like, okay, I could see that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he might say something that's like kind of a little bit lefty. Like, well, you know, also. Because they talked about bail reform. And he was like, I was once for full, you know, full on bail reform. And he gave examples of how the courts or the system would try to figure out what somebody they know couldn't pay. And then they would set it. And they would kind of try to fuck you over that way. So that's one aspect of it. Like, oh, yeah. okay. That sounds like a very... You know, show the other side of the yeah, coin. Realistic, yeah, realistic, uh, you know, even keeled approach to it. Not let people fucking run a, run amok and then still let them and, out. And then the Eric Garner thing. I think he says <clears> he wrote a book about it, but he just kind of showed like, dude, he wasn't selling loose cigarettes oh, that right. day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, he wasn't selling loose cigarettes that day. And the dude put the chokehold on him. And he said, Democrats who were being influenced by their big money donors who were real estate developers are the ones who were putting the uh, stop and frisk, like going overboard yes. with the policing. Yes. Going overboard with policing, like stopping you. Uh, okay, okay, let's just say you're a person of color, whatever. Like all of a sudden you get stopped and frisked, and that leads to more police interactions wh- where they could lead deadly. And it's like, oh, Democrats did that? Yeah. That was the Democrats doing that, trying to please their big real estate developer donors, trying to... Uh, uh, what's the word? Tighten up and lock down with the crime, so that they can make more money off these high-priced properties in these big cities. So, hey, bet you didn't know that, lefties. <laughs> so here we got he got boy Joe Breezy. Uh, so the context here is that Fallon had asked him, uh, let's see, blah, 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 about everything that's going wrong, and this was Biden's response to <laughs> Fallon. Okay, Bob Dole's eulogy. He asked me in his deathbed whether I would do his eulogy. We're friends. We disagreed, but we're friends. We used to have an awful lot of that relationship. And there still exists, except that the QAnon and the extreme elements of the Republican Party and what, what, what Donald Trump keeps sort of, seems to me, feeding the, uh, uh, you know, with the big lie, uh, it makes it awful hard. There's a, and I think most Republicans, uh, and, and there's an awful lot of Republicans in Congress, I think, would agree. You know what, bro? <clears throat> that is expected. Like when people are questioning your legitimacy, when see Trump, Trump's imperfect, but the fact that he don't, he don't back down when it comes to like, it's obvious they stole it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he's not letting off the fact that it's like lots of, lots of uh, anomalies. And like, how is it that in these ca- certain counties, more people voted than were registered to vote. And then they do it in your face. New York is saying, we willing to have about 800,000 non-citizens vote. What? I thought you had to be a citizen to vote, not to the Democrats. So it's almost like Biden is a cornered animal, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's injured. Like, hey, hey, hey. He has to. He has to be like, well, QAnon. You know what I'm saying? Like, What's, uh, What does he have uh, left? Because he's having to, first of all, just the fact that Jimmy Fallon is saying like, hey, what's up with all the shit going down? All the shit going wrong. Yeah. That alone is very telling, right? But Biden has no choice. He's cornered. Like, they're attacking his legitimacy. Pretty much everybody saying, you know, people like Trump and MAGA and Trump supporters, anyone who doubts, you know, the the transparency, the auditability of our elections. Everyone's looking at this dude like, bro, you're ruining everything. You got a wide open border. You're making inflation worse. Like, you fucked up Afghanistan. There's just, like, a laundry list of everything you're fucking up. From the pipelines, the jobs, everything. I don't want to over-romanticize it, but when you see that guy talk to Jimmy Fallon and you see him on camera and he can, like, barely keep his eyes open, you know, he can't really form a thought. 
it it bums you. It has to bum you out, in my opinion, to know that that's the guy at the helm of the most powerful seat chair of the entire country, of the entire world, arguably. That's the guy. That's the guy that they're still trying to make us believe is the the not just proper or uh, legitimate, yeah, yeah, guy to be yeah. doing it, but that he is he's your guy. He's the adult. He's the adult. Back I mean, in the Robert. I mean, <laughs> Trump was the one fanning the flames of racism and division with his rhetoric about we need a fucking border and a wall to be a country. That's racist, Rob. What what Biden is doing is he's having these cartels and shit having these shootouts with the fucking police and, and uh, high-speed chases. And <clears throat> it's like, it's a damn shame that the media, big tech, everybody colluded to get the orange hair guy, the orange face man out and, and somehow paint this picture, like almost like prop him up. I've seen the, the comics where it's like, they're fucking yeah. holding him up. Yeah. Like these are the adults. Uh, yeah. These are your betters. These are the people that have the answers. These are the people that are going to, that are going to like save us from all this bad stuff. You know, they went from like blaming every single COVID case on, on Trump and people bought it, not knowing there are a ton of variables. Okay, what's our strategy when it comes to uh, early treatments? Well, there was none. They were just pushing the jab, even though Trump was like, you know, there's hydroxychloroquine and knocks it out. You know, you there's a thing that you know I, you need a doctor, I presume. You need it, some light, maybe. It put, puts you know, it's a, it's a cleanser and it's <laughs> it's a disinfectant and it does. It's like this man was trying to. Well, DeSantis is doing a good job of pushing the early treatments, right? But. Trump bounced back after he had COVID. He's like, they gave me Regeneron. I feel great. I feel better than I did before. Monoclonal antibodies. And they gave me the ivermectin or whatever. And I know uh, Rogan has talked about it ad nauseum about like how they tried to vilify ivermectin, mm -hmm. hydroxychloroquine, these medicines that are like legit. No, no, no. It's horse goo. And it, they all colluded, bro, to make this feckless little old dementia patient. They tried to somehow they convinced i mean they didn't convince enough people they convinced a lot of people 82 who, million allegedly 82 million. you don't don't you dare allegedly don't flan the flames of the big lie now that is the big lie <laughs> the fact that people think this man really is you know legitimate look the fucking dead flashlights role is very important in the country but we've what we've all learned as well is that our governors they got some goddamn power yeah the states so as we wrap up 2021 all the Texans that listen to this podcast, keep an eye out on the 2022 race for governor. Pay attention to what Beto says and pay attention to what Wheel says, but also pay attention to what Alan West is saying yeah. and Don Huffines yeah. and even Chad Prather. Fuck, he might make yeah. he might bring some points to light that other people can't yeah. neglect. They have to they have yeah. to touch on them. So yeah. because next to that important seat of power is your governor. And if you come from a or if you're fortunate enough to uh, enough to live or move to a powerful state, you want to keep that bitch a powerful state. Guess what, bro? If these motherfuckers cheat and let Beto win, <laughs> deuce out the roof. Where are we going? Go Florida? Or? Yeah. Okay. Deuce yeah. out the roof. I don't know if you, uh, man, Rob, this might have to be a virtual thing. <laughs> I'm going to have to convince, I'm going to have to convince my wife somehow. I mean, God forbid Beto wins, but, but you made a very excellent point. We can't just uh, glance over, which is, uh, what's his name? Abbott. Yeah. Abbott ain't really. He could be doing a lot more, and we'll do. We'll probably talk, we'll probably talk about a lot of that on Friday's episode, as far as yeah. like the border and. The he needs to be primary. Yeah, he needs to be primary because he's not doing enough. He's yeah. not doing enough. I think we have better choices, but God forbid if Beto wins, deuce out the roof. I'm out. <laughs> we're gonna. <clears throat> excuse me. We're gonna have to hop into the metaverse then, so we can be as realistic as possible to do the podcast. I'm out. Peace. I mean, I, I'm. You're gonna go chill. God the forbid, because I love Texas. God forbid. You're just gonna tour and then hit the beach and then tour and hit the beach. I don't want to tour either. I don't want to tour, bro. California's reinstating masks. I have to be there this Friday. Oh, that's right. The fifteenth. Oh yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow through January something. All right. Come on. Science, man. Robert. Fuck, man. It's so science. And then you have all your friends who are they're gonna be there. I'm not trying to shoot any. I'm not. No, no shots fired at anybody, but. They're just going to willfully do it, you know, and be like, yeah, man, this is what we got to do. We'll probably put two or three of them on there and be like, Pozeske. well, some of my friends are closeted awake. Ah, they like, I like what you post, man. <laughs> hey, man, it's hard living out here, brother. Keep speaking up. 
Whatever, guys. Well, hey, we'll pray. We'll pray for the other states. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, sorry I sounded a little stuffy. Towards... You actually sounded better as the episode went on. Yeah, in the beginning. I don't know what it is. But uh, maybe the medicine's kicking in. There you go. I'm going to go enjoy some delicious meals. Have you had um, the dragon noodles yet? No. I, I guess I'll do that now. Yes. I had, I had two of the pot roast. Oh, yeah. The is stew that was, what you call it? The it, stew? it was a stew. Yeah, the, pot, the, the roast stew. Fire. Nice. I haven't had that yet, actually. <sighs> what? Nah, the dragon noodles are on point. Bro. Okay, I'll that try little, That little stew meat pot roast thing with the carrots and the potatoes yeah. and the gravy. I was like, nah, this can't be healthy. <laughs> All this gravy? No, it's not. I mean, it is healthy. It's not fucking like trash. Okay. Uh, thank you guys so much. Please spread the word. Join the newsletter. I know we be trying to like beat down y'all's brain, but if you have not, stay in touch, man. Do me a favor. Go to my website. Join the newsletter. That way we can uh, keep you informed as to everything that's going on. And then join the Patreon after that. Y'all be safe out there. Crime is going up. Peace.